so before I was going to, so I'm going to San Francisco today, today's Thursday, but, and I was debating, you know, I've been kind of busy getting ready and stuff, but I really want to do an episode by on this upcoming fight card. So I'm going to do it super duper quickly. So we're going to do it chill sauna style by myself, which is going to be interesting. I've only done like one other podcast, I think by myself. So this is going to be pretty interesting, but I was just really disappointed in myself because I ended up doing like an NFL podcast on Monday. Yeah, on Monday. And so I never got to talk about the Chikazi Barboza card. So I'm not going to bore you guys about that, but it was absolutely insane. We've, the UFC has lined up like multiple cards that are amazing back to back. Basically everybody who I thought was going to win was going to win that fight card. But as you can tell, I'm kind of out of breath because I'm just like, dude, I'm doing a podcast by myself, but it's fine. Um, I just had to get one done because the Till versus Brunson card is, and there's also some other fights that got announced. So I'm just going to do a quickie, quickie episode. But this Darren Till versus Derek Brunson card, it's so short and sweet with just, it's it's 10 bouts that are just absolute flamers, boys. Um, I just cannot wait to talk about, there's just a few main points that I wanted to get at just um, because there's some fighters that, like as such as such as Patty Pimblett who are super hyped up, but they're going against guys that are actually kind of legit. So it's gonna be super duper interesting. So for the Jonathan Martinez versus Marcelo Rojo fight, I'm I'm just gonna go through all of them individually. Jonathan Martinez, I've got him with the dub here because he his striking is insane. Marcelo is pretty good, but I just think that Jonathan Martinez is gonna get back on track after that loss to Davy Grant. He's chin is so clean. He was supposed to fight um Nathaniel Wood, who's one of my also one of my favorite um bantam weights but i think this one i'm, I'm kind of confused i think this is gonna yeah this is gonna be a 135 pound um fight jonathan his striking is so clean you have to watch out for him um and for this episode i'm gonna go through kind of w- who i think is gonna have performance of the night who is gonna be fight of the night and i've actually been low-key kind of right on a few of them which is crazy in prior cards but yeah he lost to davy grant and now he's picking up the marcello rojo uh, Michelle Rojo stepping on, sh- uh, I think it was shorter notice. They still had a little bit of time and he lost to Charles Jordan, who is also, I want to say on this card. So I'm looking for Char- Jonathan Martinez. His striking is too crisp. I think that he's going to get back on track. I really believe that he could be, um, a contender at 135, even though 135 is so freaking, um, deep. And then Dalka Illusion Bula versus Mark Andre Barrio. I think Mark Andre actually had a decent outing his last time. Um, yeah, he beat Abu Azaitar. Yeah, that's right. Azaitar, Oz- he's like Otman's brother, I think. And he looked really good. Uh, and Mark, because Mark, I think he was on a little bit of a slide. Yeah, he was on a slide. He was on three um, fight slide or skid before that fight. And Dalka is an absolute freaking like, he is a very scary individual, I believe. And the, the indie beat, the dude that dresses up like the Joker. Isn't that Marcus Perez? Yeah, that was crazy. He, yeah, Marcus Perez, he's the one that always dresses, he dresses up as a joker sometimes to intimidate his opponents at the weigh-ins and it doesn't, didn't work for Dalka, man. Didn't work for Dalka. Dalka, he's a scary, I have no idea who's going to win this fight. This is a toss-up for me. Next, Julian Arosa versus Charles Jordan. I'm telling you guys that this this card, pound for pound, every single fight is going to be fireworks because the matchups are perfect. All Everybody like wants, everybody on this card is not afraid to engage so you there's not going to be a lot of timid fights there's not going to be a lot of low action fights but the thing is even if there could be some like even though i'm contradicting myself like jake paul right now (laughs) i think that there because some of these skill levels are so high it could maybe start slow but once it gets rolling it's going to get going fast because so many of these obviously it's high level all these guys are in the ufc but these guys are all on a different level for example like the charles jordan versus julian arosa julian arosa he's a stud he's coming off a tough loss but he's gonna come at you he's the ultimate fighter alumni he is gonna he sung Wu Choi. he's a problem that he lost his last time out but his fight against sean woodson where he sean woodson you know the big lanky guy he um was kind of getting peppered that entire fight and comes back he's just got that dog in him and there's a few people on this card who i'm gonna say that have kind of just that special they don't crumble when the time gets hard they just kind of keep going and eventually they'll start to find their rhythm um and julian arosa is definitely one of those guys so i'm I'm definitely looking for him to put up a good fight against charles jordan but charles jordan they don't call mayor jordan for nothing bro he's gonna throw spinning techniques he's gonna do something crazy in his andre feely fight 
he cracked Feely. Um, he lost that fight, but and then his other time uh, against Josh Koulibaly. Josh Koulibaly is always a tough out, and they had a um, split decision draw. And then he obviously beat Marcelo Rojo. That that was the card where like Rafa Garcia, um, Marcelo Rojo, and uh, who else? Uh, I think it's Matias Nicolau. I know all those guys because they all fought on the same car because there's a bunch of fallouts, there, I think, or something. But I, I really don't know who's going to win. They're going to get two guys that are going to want to stand in the middle of the octagon and go at it. So I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to go with Charles Jordan on this one just given the fact that he has... I don't know. There's just something about him that's just really fun and exciting. Not that Julian Rosa is not. I just really think that Charles Jordan, he's going to do something crazy and end up getting an Ignacio Bahamondes type knockout or something. That'd be crazy. But I really am pushing, I root for both of them because Julian Rosa, he's a, he's definitely like a comeback story. If Bianca was here, she would for sure. Um, freaking, <laughs> she would give me crap for that. Um, I can never say comeback story without her. And giving me crap. She ruined that catchphrase for me. Um, and then the Jack Shore versus Ludwig Scholinian. It's going to be so good. Ludwig Scholinian, he's stepping in on short, no- uh, short notice for, um, is this Viad Lavashvili? That, who I was talking, I did my Georgian fighter segment on that. Jack Shore was supposed to fight him and I was pumped about that because, because they're such both, they're both great grapplers. Um, yeah, Zviad Lavashvili, but it's Ludwig Scholinian, ultimate fighter. You're going to see, I think the, the, he's definitely going to be. I think he's part of UFC now. Obviously, that was weird because the Michael Gilmore versus Andre Protoski fight. That was apparently. I think they just had those guys in there because they made it to the semifinals. I guess uh, in tough, and they wanted somebody from Team Ortega to represent. Those guys weren't even UFC yet, but since he's fight, since Ludwig's fighting Jack Shore, I guess he's definitely in the UFC. He's not going to not be wearing UFC on his gloves like. The guys in the tough um, semifinale and then in the other bout between Gilmore and Petrovsky, they didn't have the UFC on their gloves and they weren't wearing UFC um, shorts either. So th- this, honestly, for Ludwig Sholinian, I'm going to make the case that being in the Ultimate Fighter semifinal, or not semi, the Ultimate Fighter finals, I guess, d- being in this fight against Jack Shore does way more for you than being than becoming the ultimate fighter you're going to be fighting a 14 and 0 absolute stud on the ground who will maul you but that's what Ludwig's looking for that he's going to it's going to be tough i mean if this fight goes to the ground you obviously have to favor jack shore just because he's so freaking skilled but ludwig in his fight versus uh who did he fight he fought um he fought Obviously, he fought Ricky, but then the other, the other dude he fought was Su, uh, Mitch Raposo. And then the both of those guys are insane grapplers. So I, this is a massive opportunity for Ludwig if he manages to get the dub. I will never count anybody out after watching GM three beat Mahmoud Miradov. Anything in this sport is possible. That was a good reminder of that anything in this sport is impossible because I, I think. I think on the main card, Mahmoud was the biggest favorite on the um, main card. And somehow Gerald just managed to eat shots. And the one thing I was going to say about that is that that just goes to show that fight between Mahmoud Miradov and GM3 goes to show how insanely good Hamzat Chemaev is because Mahmoud hit GM3 with some massive shots and GM3 took it. And all it took was about 20 seconds for Hamzat Chemaev to put gm3's lights out so that just goes to show how dangerous Hamza Chemaev is going to be in that Li Jing liang fight is going to i think that's going to be Hamza's coming out party where you're like okay yeah this dude is going to be a problem for a long time so yeah i'm, I'm really I'm, I'm rooting for ludwig but at the same time jack shore he's just so good so i'm going to go with jack shore on this but i really hope ludwig has a good performance and kind of just puts himself in there as the as a another f- amazing contender at bantamweight because he's so tough. I mean, the toughness that he displayed in the, in that Ricky Tercios fight was insane. Like they legit went to war. So I, I'm looking for Jack Shore, but I'm rooting for Ultimate Fighter alumni, obviously. And then uh, Molly McCann, I'm looking for Meatball to get this dub, just given the fact. Uh, but uh, Keem, she's so good though. So many of these girls from like China and Korea, they're absolute killers. So. I, I don't know, but I just think it would be really cool to... And she lost to Alexa Grasso her last time out, so 
And Alex Grasso is obviously one of the best boxers in the, I think she was in straw and now she's in flyweight uh, division. But I want Meatball to get the dub here, just given the fact that there's so many people from the UK on this card. And then Luigi Vendermini versus Patty Pimble. I believe this is this fight right here is going to be fight of the uh, night for these reasons. So Patty Pimble obviously got great ground game. He's going to throw, I, I watch all of his highlights and stuff. He's going to be throwing flying techniques whenever we are in a clinch. He's got pretty good stand up. But the thing is, people got cannot sleep on Luigi Vendermini. I don't know why. Is because he in his first in his last fight that I watched, I he has a fan of me for life because he fought and I've talked about this on a prior podcast is he fought Ferris uh Ziam or Ziam, who is way longer than he is. Um incredibly clean striking and he was getting kind of pieced up. Farah Faras was not he was not letting Luigi get anything off. I mean, Luigi landed some good shots, and it was just, you can tell even with uh, the announcers, they were just counting Luigi out the entire time. They're just like, yeah, this dude doesn't really stand a chance. Like, that's essentially what they were saying. But Luigi, you know what he said? He said, absolutely, fuck that, bro. And he comes storming at, like, that's what you have to do. He's, Luigi, like, just like Julian Arosa, he's got that absolutely i don't use this often but it sounds cringy as hell but he has a legit d-a-w-g in him when he's gonna come at you he's gonna take he's going to throw you off your game he's not eventually if he understands that people want to stay on the outside and pick you apart he's just gonna freaking hit you with the flurry he's gonna storm in he might not land anything he might att try to attempt to change levels but he's gonna throw you off your rocker and that's why i really like luigi vendor I mean, he got an instagram follow out of me after his last fight so i think that people are just riding the patty pilmet train rightfully so he's gonna be an absolute cash cow for the ufc but luigi's a tough test and even though he's coming off a loss, in my opinion, he came back and Loki kind of won that fight. He got some takedowns. He threw for Siam, who's a phenomenal striker, off his game just by um, being fearless. He didn't crumple. He didn't crumble under pressure because a lot of guys, when they're getting picked apart, they just get frustrated. Um, he didn't give up at all, and that's why I think Luigi Vendermini has a legit shot here, and I think that this could be a good fight, uh, fight of the night. Then the next fight, um, I kind of talked about this last podcast between Khalil Roundtree and Modestus Bokowskis. They're both coming off um, kind of tough losses because Khalil Roundtree, in my opinion, he beat um, Marcin Pracnio in his last time. He knocked him down like two times and still somehow lost the fight, which is absolutely ridiculous to me. Um, and then he's fighting Modestus Bokowskis, who is kind of, I, I thought he beat um, Michel Olesheja or Michael Olesheja in his last time. Like there was just a good stand up battle. I think you're going to see a phenomenal stand up battle here. Um, the first time I ever saw Modestus, he's still, both of these guys are still young. First time I saw Modestus was against when he beat on Andreas Michalidis with the freaking elbows because Andreas shot and then he just kept throwing elbows at him and knocked him out, which was crazy. And then he obviously ran into Jimmy Crute, which is like, Everybody who's going to run into Jimmy Crute has a good chance of losing, except Anthony Lionheart. Anthony Lionheart, he pulled one. Those kicks, baby, those are game changers. But his fight against Michelle O'Shea, I thought he bounced back well. Um, Michelle's got great boxing, but I thought uh, Modestus did a great job of standing with him and landing heavier shots. Uh, so I, I really don't know who's going to win this fight. I'm rooting for Khalil just because his story is fantastic. Both of these guys, their back is up against the wall a little bit here because um, they're both coming off a few losses. I think Khalil, he's lost to Eon. He got knocked out, and then he lost to Marching. So both of these guys are coming out. They're, they're just too young to give up on, in my opinion, and this is going to be a fantastic light heavyweight bout. Uh, I'm leading towards Khalil just because... I love him so much, but Modestus, he's so big. He's a big, big light heavy. I mean, obviously the light heavyweights are big, but he's he's definitely got the frame and Khalil's a little bit smaller, so that could play a role. I don't know. I, I like both these guys. I hope both of them have a great performance. And then Alex Morono, he came on, on, I think it was, I don't know, was it short notice that he came on to fight Donald Cowboy? I forget. He's fighting David Zawada. I think Alex Morono, he's, he's a good welterweight here, but um, Zawada... I don't know. I'm leaning towards Morona. Just his um, performance against Cowboy was crazy. You, like Besides the Connor knockout, Cowboy hasn't been picked apart like that. And then here's another one, guys. Okay, we're at the ninth of the 10th fight. Okay, we're at 15 minutes here. Tom Aspinall versus Sergey Spivak. 
Tom Aspinall, he his blast double to get Andre Arlovsky into a, a rear, uh, rear naked choke. That was hella impressive, and I think. I honestly, nothing, nothing against Pavlovich or whatever, the guy he was supposed to fight, but Sergei Spivak is a young, hungry contender, and I think that Tom Asimov could have his hands full here because Sergei, he's not afraid to go to the ground. He's pretty good on the feet, and he's fought really good um, fighters. I think he's beat Carlos Felipe. Uh, who else does he fight? Let me check. Um, oh, yeah, he beat Jared Vandera and then Alexi Olenek, who, I mean, is an ageless wonder. So this fight is going to be kind of crazy to me because... Tom Aspinall, he probably will in his later years be heavyweight champion eventually. And it's cr pretty cool that him and Darren are on the same card. Uh, I think Lerone Murphy's fight got fall, fall out, fell out, but that kind of sucks. But I think Sergey Spivak, boys, could come in with the upset. He's young, hungry. He's got a good, uh, he's got a really good, this is a great stylistic match. Uh, like, I think he poses a lot of problems for Tom. I don't know if Tom's going to be able to take him down if his stand-up's not going. Because we saw that with Tom Aspinall's fight against Andre Arlovsky. Andre just kept eating shots, and then eventually he just he made the adjustment. He's like, I actually need to take him down. But taking Sergei Spivak down is going to be a way tougher test, in my opinion, than taking Andre Arlovsky down. I don't know. That could be a crazy outlandish statement that I just made, just given the fact that Arlo Arlovsky is a former heavyweight champion. And Sergei hasn't been in the UFC as long. But Sergei, I love the polar bear. He will... He's going to give, I think he's going to give Tom Aspinall his toughest test yet. Here we go. That's that. Um, and then Derek Brunson versus Darren Till, baby. I got Darren Till all day. I think he's going to stuff takedowns because he's been, he trains with Tom Aspinall. And if Tom Aspinall tries to take you down, I don't think Derek Brunson's going to take you down. If you can stop, if you, if you can stuff a shot from Tom Aspinall, I don't give Derek Brunson a shot. And Darren's just bigger and stronger. He's not going to be able to manhandle um, him like, Derek Brunson is not going to be able to manhandle, manhandle Darren like he did Kevin Holland. And Darren has better striking than Kevin Holland. And we saw Kevin Holland crack Derek Brunson on multiple occasions in that fight. I think Darren Till is going to win this fight. I think he's going to get a third round KO. Second or third round KO. I really like Darren Till's mindset after watching him in his uh, in his little media scrum. He just seems like he's in a good headspace. And he's he, he's a scary contender. He's a killer right now. He, he has all respect for Derek Brunson. Like, Derek Brunson is a legit contender. I just think it's Darren Till's time. He's kind of taking the back. Like, he's was a rising contender. Got his title shot and then kind of took a dip from there. Not a dip. He just has had his losses. And I think it's just his time to kind of rise out of that. So I'm really looking for Darren Till here. But I'm, I'm this is so weird. You guys, if uh, you're watching or whatever, you should let me know how I'm doing, if I should do anything differently. Because it's really weird not having a co-host here. So, yeah, I don't know. And then there were a couple fights. I love this U uh, fight. Shout out to Fightbook on YouTube. Uh, Like, they help me out a lot. I don't know. I, there's not one specific source that I get because I, I love to know that i wish on espn there's updates like all oh, this fight got signed or whatever but you have to follow the right news outlets and also the weird thing is apparently for the ally quinta versus uh bobby king green there apparently ally quinta didn't even sign the contract and they announced the news so that would be super frustrating and i really hate that because i really like to talk about fights before and sometimes if i like to talk about them when they are i would like to start talking about them more when they're just announced but it kind of sucks that news gets broken before guys even agree on about so it kind of gets my hopes up and all these people release it just to get eyeballs on their site so that kind of i wish things were officially set in stone but there's a few fights that i really want to talk about so the sean woodson that i was talking about uh he fought julian arosa he's fighting uh connor anglin i want to say, is that his name oh colin anglin and colin anglin he looked really good i want to say colin anglin, he's the one that fought melsic bagdasarian and melsic actually signed he is uh fighting tj laramie Melsic the gun he's so good and Colin Anglin he actually did really well like he managed to get Melsic to the ground he I think he, he was new both of Melsic and Colin were new when they fought each other but it's Sean Woodson that's that's a tough tough test for your first 
uh, for your second fight in the UFC? Because going up against Melsic Bagdasarin and Sean Woodson, they're throwing you to the wolves there a little bit, but they must have really high hopes for this guy. He he's he looks like a good 145-er. Um, but Sean Woodson, he's just so long for that division. I'm really looking forward to that fight. And then one fight they got, because we were talking about Demirish, Magulov, Shavkat, Rachmanov, and um, who else? Mahmoud Miradov and Demirish Magulov actually got a, he got a, I think he's fighting uh, Magomed Mustafaev, which is going to be crazy. I really like Demirish Magulov. I really believe he could be a lightweight champion. Um, I want to check and see really fast if this fight is actually a thing. Cause like I said, they sometimes announce fights without people actually signing up. <laughs> and I was going to do a podcast yesterday, but my throat was just killing. Oh yeah. They announced that. Yeah. My throat, I've had this weird like tonsillitis stuff and my throat sounds awful and it's kind of coming back to haunt me right now uh, i'm really looking for demir here demir he is an absolute manimal in his striking everything these guys are the most well-rounded athletes in the sport for sure they um yeah he kazakhstan kazakhstan fighters i think uh zagazhu magulov is from there as well so many good they are the epitome of what it makes martial artists should be and then Brad Waddell versus a uh, Rafael Fazeev got re- announced. And Brad Waddell, he got cracked in his last time against Drew Dober. But who cares? He ended up weathering the early storm, and he just did so well uh, in the in the la- latter two rounds. So he kind of just pulled away big time against Drew Dober. So I'm looking forward to this first Rafael Fazeev. He's coming off that kind of controversial a little bit versus Bobby Green. A lot of people thought Bobby King Green won that fight, but... I think Rafael just did too much. And this is going to be a crazy 155 pound matchup. Uh, Rafael Fazeev versus D- Demir Magulov. Uh, I, I honestly, Loki, I know that this is just on a webpage right now. I wouldn't mind seeing a fight like that. If you could throw, like, if you threw Rafael Fazeev versus Demir Magulov in there against each other or the winner of these, this fight, these two fights, I would not be mad at all. Especially um, Mustafaev. He's a stud. Like, he's legit jacked. The 155ers, they're the perfect besides probably, I don't know. I think 155 is the, besides 135 though, I got to go with 155 is probably the most perfect combination of speed and power, you know? Because some of these guys just throw, I'll never forget that Tiago Moises versus Alexander Hernandez where they just stand in the middle of the octagon and bang. I was super pumped to see this. I just saw it this morning. And then obviously our boy Groot Smocker, Chris Groot Smocker coming off that big dub against Rafa Garcia. He's going to be fighting Claudio Poyes. Poyes? Poyes? I don't know. Um, Chris Groot Smocker, I will never not watch one of his fights, bro. He's absolutely sick. And when I saw the UFC 268, card i was just losing my absolute marbles that thing is going to probably if every if every fight stays intact i'm telling you that's going to be one of the better that's going to be big time baby and then our boy melsic by disarian i can't not talk about the gun here he's fighting tj laramie i think tj laramie lost to Derek minner but Derek minner is so good on the ground but Derek minner got taken out by our boy the damage yeah um darren elkins uh I think they I think Melsic Bagdasarian. You guys got to watch out for this guy. I, I don't know if you guys watched him when he fought uh, Colin Anglin, but he's. I don't know how else to explain it. It's he's literally a machine gun, and he's going to throw spinning techniques. And so many of these guys, they're so exciting nowadays. It's crazy. He's going, he throws absolute heat seeking missiles. Melsic, and he's got the sick, he's got a sick name, Bagdasarian, Melsic Bagdasarian. You have to remember that guy. He's gonna, I think he'll probably rip through DJ Laramie. I really believe that he is going to be a 145 pound threat, dude. One fight that I was, that I did see, that I have that I had zero faith was going to happen was the um, Vicente Luque versus Nate Diaz because Vicente called out Nate Diaz after his fight with, um, was it Tyrant? Oh, no, it was the Michael Chiesa fight, I think. Yeah, or it was one of those. Yeah, he just fought, he just fought Michael Chiesa, yeah, and choked him out. Um, I, didn't, I, I really didn't think that... It's just really sick to see Nate Diaz being open to fighting a guy like Vicente Luque because I think a fight with him versus Derek um, D-Rod would be 
insanity. Could you imagine the build up for that fight? It would be so sick. I think that'd be a great card or a great fight. I think that Derek, um, D Rod, he, he's too, he'd be too big. And I, I obviously think the same thing for Vicente Luque. Vicente is too big for Nate Diaz. He's too good. Well, I don't want to say Nate Diaz isn't a small person, but I just don't think it's a good matchup for Nate whatsoever. Just given the fact that Vicente has felt a guy like Michael Chiesa, who is a huge welterweight. I want to know how, what you guys would think um, would happen if Vicente and Nate Diaz fought. I think Vicente has got that in, in the, in the bag for sure it's just another it, it, you just always have to be cognizant of the fact that nate diaz could land that one shot like he did against uh leon but the interesting thing is sometimes vicente says screw it boys and he just goes balls to the walls and he'll attack you and he'll leave himself open and you can get cracked and that's what makes that fight so interesting, especially a guy like Nate Diaz who's got really slick boxing and can get that stuck and slap and then hit you with a cross, you know? So that would be insane. Um, I want to look at the UFC welterweight rankings right now um, because I want to play a little matchup because I want to know who would be a good... Like I said, guys, what did I say against the, uh, the D-Rod versus Kevin Lee? D-Rod's takedown defense was insane. And I was watching the fight companion with Brendan Schaub and Rampage Jackson, all those guys. And Brendan was like, I thought Kevin Lee won that fight. And I was like, what are you talking about? Um, There's no way he won that fight. I, I was saying Derek Rodriguez. It's Daniel Rodriguez, bro. I'm so sorry about that. Who's Derek Rodriguez? I think Derek Rodriguez was a freaking giant, wasn't he? <laughs> Let me see here. <laughs> I'm all over the place, boys. Yeah, Derek Derek Rodriguez was a pitch giant uh pitch uh pitcher for the Giants, Kellen. Communication major. Jesus Christ. God. As you can tell, I've got a lot of work to do. Um Daniel Rodriguez, baby. Muslim Solikov. You could get that Sean Brady fight. That's a tough fight for anybody though. I'm so happy to see Daniel Rodriguez in that top fifteen. He deserves it. Nate Diaz. Uh man, I don't know. It was a good fight. You go Santiago Pontanavia is coming off that big dub. Uh yeah, you go see what happens with Hamzat. Oh, that'd be crazy. Who uh, Jeff Neal's looking for a fight. Daniel Rodriguez versus Jeff Neal would be a good one. I mean, that's a, that's a big jump up, 15 to 10. I don't know. Who does Santiago Ponsonibio beat, dude? Uh, oh, he beat uh, Caramel Thunder, Miguel Baeza. That's a good, that was a good fight. I don't know. I want to know what you guys think if you're guys watching this. Who do you think's a good fight for um, Daniel coming up next? But okay, I got to get out of here. I got to go to the bank or whatever. I got to go to deposits and stuff. But yeah, thank you guys so much for listening. I'm sorry that I'm happy I got to go through these fights a little bit. But yeah, sorry that this episode probably isn't the best. But you know, I, I want to start doing a little bit more of the chill sauna by myself because Bianca's so busy all the time that I kind of just am going to start doing some by myself but yeah thank you guys so much for listening and yeah i'll try to get this up soon bye bye <laughs>